Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. Presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC. Stangy Law Firm is a family law firm with offices in Missouri and Illinois. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. We have an interesting topic today. The title of the topic is Expectations of Quick Divorce Settlement. And this is based on an article on our blog, FamilyLawHeadquarters.com, dated July 27, 2015. The title of that article is, Is Expecting Divorcing Parties to Settle Quickly Reasonable? Uh, and again, that article is dated July 27, 2015. As a follow-up to the episode, you can go to FamilyLawHeadquarters.com and again, click the article titled, Is Expecting Divorcing Parties to Settle Quickly Reasonable? So let's get on to the topic itself. Um, obviously, uh, you know, most folks out there don't want to go through a divorce. They hope they're never in the position uh, where that has to take place. Uh, and the view of many people in society in this regard is that, you know, when a divorce does have to take place, you know, the hope is that it can be quick, it can be simple, it can be easy, it can be a relatively inexpensive thing to do, uh, and the process shouldn't drag on, it shouldn't cost a lot of money and fees, it shouldn't take a ton of time. And, and, and at the end of the day, that this is a bad thing if all this stuff takes place. And so the view of many is divorce ought to be simple and easy, and it ought to be quick. And I think that is basically the viewpoint of lots of folks out there in society, especially people who maybe haven't been through divorce before, don't have a whole lot of experience with it in a firsthand basis. Uh, they just think it ought to be a quick, easy uh, sort of painless process. And at the end of the day, I think these thoughts make a whole lot of sense. After all, I mean, who would want a drawn-out divorce? Uh, who would want to spend a lot of money attorney fees? I mean, nobody would want these things. Uh, who would want to put uh, the life and the lives of themselves and their family in the hands of a judge who doesn't know them very well uh, to make a decision for their family? I mean, who would want that? Uh, who would want a divorce to drag on for months or maybe even years uh, and, and cause you know the whole family to be, in essence, caught up in the court system, kind of left in limbo in terms of trying to uh, ascertain how the rest of their life might go. I mean, nobody would want this. I mean, at the end of the day, um, sane people would want to settle their case outside of court. Uh, sane people would want to make a decision amicably in terms of resolving a divorce case outside of court and not have a judge who doesn't know them make that decision. Obviously, sane people aren't going to want to spend money on attorney fees needlessly. Obviously, folks work hard uh, to have the funds that they have. Uh, they don't want to uh, spend that attorney fees uh, litigating a case. And at the end of the day, I mean, truly, sane people don't want to put their family through uh, an ugly divorce, a messy divorce, a contested divorce, if you will. I mean, sane people at the end of the day uh, wouldn't want these things. and They would want the case to end amicably, uh, peacefully, in a way that allows themselves and their family uh, to move on. And so, I mean, I think in that regard, uh, it, the sentiment of a quick, easy, simple, reasonably uh, uh, ended case uh, makes a whole lot of sense and certainly – uh, it's understandable that folks would want this to be. And for lots of individuals uh, out there, it can be this. You know, there are folks who are able to enter uh, amicable divorce settlements relatively uh, quickly with ease. You know, there's some folks who are able to go to mediation uh, and resolve their case. You know, collaborative law uh, is an area of law that is sort of growing in popularity. And at our firm, um, uh, we've got you know multiple attorneys who are trained in collaborative law, and so lots of folks are able to go to collaborative law uh, on a, I mean, really an increasing basis. Again, collaborative law is sort of a, a newer area, uh, it's sort of the future, if you will. But there are folks who are able to uh, uh, go to collaborative law nationwide and resolve you know their family law case uh, in a way that's amicable. That at the end of the day, doesn't put their family through a nasty you know, drawn-out divorce. Um, on the flip end, though, there are lots of folks who simply aren't able to do this. Um, while conceptually they both want to settle, while uh, if you asked them both independently, 
you know, whether they wanted a long, drawn-out divorce. You know, I mean, they would certainly say no. And, and sane people, obviously, and asked, I mean, do, do you want to spend a lot of money on attorney fees on a nasty, contested procedure? I mean, most folks out there are going to absolutely say they don't want that. Uh, but for whatever reason, they're still not able to have uh, that divorce that ends simply. And the reality of the situation is this is the case for lots of lots of people, uh, especially right out of the gates uh, when a divorce begins. And to the listeners out there, you might ask, well, why is that? I mean, why can't people just simply end the case uh, quickly, easy, and out of court in, in an amicable manner? And I think to lots of folks, it's just perplexing that that couldn't be the case. And so, you know, lots of people ask lots of questions in terms of why why that is. I mean, why isn't it that most cases can't just settle really quick outside of court? And, and here's the deal in a nutshell, which is, you know, settlement in a divorce requires folks to compromise. Um, so to resolve a divorce, you know, what this entails in a nutshell is this, which is uh, to have a divorce that, that is pushed through relatively quickly, you know, both parties have to agree that they want the divorce. Um, so that's an, uh, an important first step. You know, both parties have to agree uh, that the marriage is irretrievably broken, um, and, and that's the, what the law is in the state of Missouri, and, and, and that, you know, the marriage can't be saved. You know, if, if folks can agree on that, then what they have to do is go through their marital property and marital debt, and they've got to divide it all in a just manner. Um, so they've got to go through in terms of bank accounts, in terms of maybe a house, in terms of automobiles, uh, maybe retirement accounts, maybe stocks, maybe bonds, and maybe credit cards, uh, mortgages, other debt that's owed, and they've got to agree on how all that's going to be divided. Then take child custody. You know, there's terminology like joint or sole custody. Well, they're going to have to agree to that. And there's what's called physical custody, which is where, you know, where kids live. And then there's legal custody, which is who makes the decision for the kids. And so, you know, parties to divorce have to agree on, on that terminology, joint or sole custody in terms of the physical and the legal. And they have to agree on a specific custody schedule. So who's going to get the kids when? And literally, parties have to break it down, you know, week by week and indicate if we can't agree, here's what's going to happen. So who gets the kids Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then what about the holidays? Uh, what about uh, summertime? Who's getting the kids then? And, 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 and all of that has to be agreed upon. And then take, like, where where the kids would be exchanged. You know, do, does, do the parties meet halfway? Does one drop off to the other? You know, how is that going to work? And then you get into other items like, who gets to deduct the kids on the taxes? You know, who's paying for college if the kids go to college? Or if there's private school, who's paying for that? Who's covering health insurance? Uh, health costs that are uncovered by insurance, how is that going to be divvied up and paid? And how does one party notify the other if that takes place? And then what about extracurricular activities? Maybe the kids are in, in sports or other activities. Could be swim, could be dance. I mean, you name it, it could be just about anything. And who's paying for that? Uh, all of that has to be agreed upon. And then child support. You know, is there child support going to be paid uh, or not? If so, who's paying to who and how much is being paid? Um, and then if there's more than one child, it uh, generally needs to be broken down. You know, what child support would be for three kids and two kids and then, you know, one. And in terms of a situation where the, the oldest one becomes emancipated, now there's only two, and let's say – that child becomes emancipated, and now there's only one child who needs child support. It's got to be agreed upon what that amount's going to be. And then spousal support or spousal maintenance, um, uh, is somebody paying that? Uh, if somebody is paying that, who's paying it to who? What's the amount of spousal maintenance that's being paid? And then how long is it going to be paid? Is this the, the what's called modifiable maintenance, where it's it continues on until one party files a motion to modify to amend it, or is this for a set term, a contractual maintenance award, if you will, where it ends on a certain date? And then attorney fees. You know, who's paying uh, whose attorney fees? Or do both parties uh, just simply pay their own fees? Um, it could be a case where, you know, one party contributes a little bit to the other party's attorney fees uh, if there's a need there. But, but again, to settle a divorce case, parties have to agree on all these different items and that can be very, very difficult for individuals going through divorce because, let's face it, lots of people at the end of the day end up 
uh, getting divorced. Why? Because they have problems compromising. And so, you know, throughout the marriage, it could be a situation where uh, uh, different decisions had to be made uh, for the parties and for the kids, and they struggled with it. And they had a hard time compromising. And based on that hard time compromising, lots of folks end up saying, you know, it'll be easier if we uh, both live in, in different residences and we can do things our way in our own home uh, because we're unable to make decisions uh, with each other. And so asking folks who have had a hard time compromising to all of a sudden compromise to end the case, to end their divorce case quickly, easily, simply, in a minimal cost, in minimal pain to the parties, while in theory both parties want it, that is very difficult for folks who've had a hard time compromising. And it's very difficult for individuals who are upset with each other uh, about the divorce, that are angry. Um, uh, and this can especially be true if one party uh, maybe doesn't want the divorce as much as the other one, or maybe they don't want it at all. All of a sudden, trying to get them to agree on all these different items can be very, very difficult. And so, you know, again, the premise is, you know, is expecting divorcing parties to settle quickly reasonable? Is it reasonable? Um, certainly, it's smart for a lot of folks. Certainly, a lot of individuals should strive to settle their case. They shouldn't want to spend their money uh, needlessly on attorney fees. They shouldn't want their case to drag on uh, for months or years. Um, and so, I mean, that viewpoint is very true. But is it reasonable to expect folks that have had a hard time compromising throughout a marriage to all of a sudden compromise to end it. Is that reasonable? And again, that's the premise. And the reality of the situation is oftentimes that isn't reasonable. Oftentimes it takes parties a while to get to a place uh, where they're both willing to somehow meet in a place that allows the case to end. In other words, it takes them a while uh, to decide that they need to compromise, that they must compromise, and that, in fact, compromising is better than the alternative uh, in most instances of letting a judge decide. Now, in some cases, you know, uh, maybe the judge has to decide. Uh, maybe there's just extreme differences between the parties in the case ultimately has to be tried <clears throat> for one reason or another. Uh, but in cases where maybe that isn't the, the, the situation, it just takes most parties a while to get to that place uh, to where they want to compromise. It takes a lot of individuals, um, some court appearances, some time spent on the case to realize um, that at the end of the day, uh, uh, the divorce process isn't a fun process. At the end of the day, it's hard for both parties to walk away uh, happy, and that meeting in the middle uh, makes a lot of sense. And so, you know, is it reasonable to expect divorcing parties to, to settle quickly? In a lot of instances, probably not. At the end of the day, most folks do still settle. They should still settle. Uh, settlement uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, for the listeners out there, if you have a case and uh, you both want to settle, so you want to settle, your spouse wants to settle, but you, you disagree on various items that hang the thing up and you're having problems compromising, you know, consider collaborative law. Uh, definitely a good process uh, where it allows the parties to sit down with their collaborative uh, trained attorney uh, to try to reach resolutions uh, that work uh, for both parties. Uh, and then through the process, you know, different um, individuals can be brought in to assist. For example, financial neutrals can be brought in uh, to help parties uh, break down numbers, uh, maybe get items appraised, evaluated if need be. Uh, in some cases, it makes sense to bring in a child uh, custody, child custody um, uh, uh, person, if you will, who has a lot of experience in this area, uh, who can help guide the parties in terms of creating a custody schedule that might work for the parties. And then divorce coaches oftentimes come in as well, and a divorce coach can come in and help ease uh, folks when maybe they're getting emotional, when maybe the process is getting hard. And this person, uh, in a lot of ways, engages in a therapeutic role, if you will, uh, to help parties get to a reasonable place. You know, past collaborative law mediation uh, can work for lots of parties as well, where the parties sit down uh, with a mediator, generally uh, without their attorney present, uh, uh, at least in, in Missouri. Um, but in some cases, that might be different as well in certain jurisdictions. But oftentimes, mediation can help as well. 
Um, but again, the topic is is expecting divorcing parties to settle quickly reasonable. Um, I'd say most instances it's not reasonable to conclude that. Some folks can do it, uh, but far too many struggle because compromise has been a hard thing for them. So uh, that's the topic. Uh, as a follow-up, again, go to familylawheadquarters.com. Uh, check out the article dated July 27, 2015. It will give you a little more information on this topic. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Family Law Talk with Stengy Law Firm. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. With Kirk Stange. Visit StangeLawFirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stange Law Firm to work for your family today. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. Neither the Supreme Court of Missouri or Illinois reviews or approves certifying organizations or specialist designations. The information you obtain on this podcast is not, nor is it intended to be legal advice. You should contact an attorney for advice regarding your individual situation. We invite you to contact us and welcome your calls, letters, and electronic mail. Contacting us does not create an attorney-client relationship. Please do not send any confidential information to us until such time as an attorney-client relationship has been established. And finally, past results afford no guarantee of future results. And every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. Kirk Stingy is responsible for the content. Principal Place of Business, 1750 South Brentwood Boulevard, Suite 401, St. Louis, Missouri, 63144. Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to Discover. Eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woo -er, a hand clapper, a high-fiver? I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses, so don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.